This lesson deals with network functions and the impulse response. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 11, starting on page 6. The impulse response is the zero state response when the input is a unit impulse applied at t equals zero. In other words, in general, y of s is equal to t of s times x of s. But if x of s is equal to 1, then y of s is equal to just t of s, and we're going to define that as h of s, called the impulse response. And so our output transform equals our network function. It's worth noting that h of t contains all the information we need to determine the response of the circuit for any input. In other words, the Laplace transform of h of t is t of s, and y of t is just the inverse Laplace transform then of h of s times x of s. Let's do an example. Suppose we find the response of the circuit in example 11.3 on page 4 when the input is equal to a unit impulse response. Let's use R1 equal to 10K, R2 equal to 12.5K, C1 equal to 1 microfarad, and C2 equal to 2 microfarads. And let's verify the results with p-splice. For our transfer function for the circuit in example 11.3, we found this expression on page 5, and that would be our H of S. Let's plug in the values of the R's and C's. So I got 1 microfarad, 10K, 2 microfarads, 12.5K, 2 microfarads, 1 microfarad, 10K, 12.5K, 1 microfarad, 10K, 2 microfarads, 12.5K, 2 microfarads, and then 10K. If you multiply this out, you get 10 milli. Multiply this out, you get 25 milli. This multiplied out gives me 250 micro. And all of this multiplied and added is equal to 55 milli. Now let's pull out a 10 milli and a 25 milli from the numerator. So 1 over 10 milli is 100, 1 over 25 milli is 40. Pull out a 250 micro from the denominator. It's actually going to cancel with 10 milli times the 25 milli. We got S squared, and then 250 micro divided into 55 milli is 220, and then 1 over 250 micro is 4,000. Let's multiply out the numerator. So I've got S squared, 100S, 40S, which gives me 140S, and then 100 times 40, which is 4,000. Let's find the roots of our denominator. Using the quadratic formula, I've got minus 220 plus or minus 220 squared minus 4 times 1 times 4,000 divided by 2 times 1. It turns out to be minus 220 plus or minus 180 divided by 2. That gives me minus 20 and minus 200. Now h of s has got s squared and as the highest power of s divided by likewise s squared. So it's an improper rational function. I need to do a long division to express it in terms of a term plus a proper rational function. So let's take the denominator which is s squared plus 220s plus 4,000, and divide that into the numerator, which is s squared plus 140s plus 4,000. 1 times the denominator gives me s squared 220s plus 4,000. The s squares cancel, and the 4,000s cancel, and I get a minus 80s. So I could write h of s as 1 plus the remainder of minus 80s divided by s squared plus 220s plus 4,000. And now we can do a partial fraction expansion. So I have 1 plus k1 divided by my root at minus 20, so s plus 20, and then another term, k2, divided by s plus 200. To find the term k1, we'll then multiply our proper rational function by s plus 20, and then let s equal minus 20. And we're going to get cancellation of terms. So you get minus 80 times minus 20 over minus 20 plus 200. That turns out to be 8.88. To find k2, we'll multiply our proper rational function by s plus 200, and let s equal minus 200. Again, we'll get these term cancellations. I get minus 80s times minus 200 over minus 200 plus 20, and that's equal to a minus 88.8. We write h of s then as 1 plus 8.88 divided by s plus 20 minus 88.8 divided by s plus 200. Now going back to our table in chapter 9, we'll take the inverse Laplace transform of this. This will be our unit impulse function, and then we'll have 88.8 times e to the minus 20 times t, then a minus 88.8 times e to the minus 200 times t times u of t. Write this as the reciprocal of itself. The 1 over 1 over 20 is equal to 50 milli, and then taking the same thing here is 1 over 1 over 200, and I get 5 milli. So I got this expressed in terms of time constants. Now, there is no impulse function in the SPICE program or in PSPICE. So to make the impulse look ideal, the width and time that we must pick must be much less than the fastest response of the circuit that we're analyzing. So our fastest response was a 5 millisecond time constant in our last term in the formula above. So let's pick our time of our impulse to be much less than that, say 1 one hundredth, which would be 50 microseconds. Now we have to have an area of 1 for the unit impulse function, so we'll pick the peak then to be 1 over 50 microseconds, or 20,000 volts. 
Our other problem is that P-Spice and likewise Spice does not have a rise and fall time of zero. We have to give something for the rise and fall time. Let's take our value here and make it 1 one hundredth time smaller. We'll look at 0.5 microseconds for our rise and fall time. Let's grab our schematic from page four. I have a title that was example 11.8. Got a dot end, asked for graphing our outputs. And then we'll describe our pulse as a voltage source from one to zero. And the pulse command has these particular things you need to specify. The first one is the value of V1. The second is the value of V2. So we're gonna start out with zero volts and then 20,000 volts. Now we can have a time delay before our pulse starts, but we can just make that equal to zero. The rise time and fall time we've picked to be 0.5 microseconds. Our pulse width needs to be 50 microseconds. And then we need to specify the period of the pulse. Our largest time constant was 50 milliseconds. So if we take five times that, that's 250 milliseconds. So we'll see the five time constant response of our circuit. The rest of our schematics R1 between one and two, C1 between one and two, C2 between two and three, and then R2 between three and zero. And our output's actually at node two. Let's see what the response looks like. Take a look at node voltage one, which is our input, and then here's our output at node voltage two. We have this spike, which is supposed to be our impulse input. I delayed plotting here, just slid over the axis where here's zero seconds. So you can see I've got a very narrow pulse. It's about 50 microseconds. Now the output has exactly the same pulse along here, and the area actually is one. It's got a height of 20,000 and the width 50 microseconds, just like it is here. Now if you look at our equation back on page eight, part of our response is that we're gonna see an output that is equal to the impulse function plus two decaying exponentials. So let's zoom in on this part of the curve and see if those exponentials are actually there. But sure enough, I got a dipping down and I got something coming back up again. Now at t equals zero plus, the impulse is equal to zero. So I just have my exponentials, which would be 8.88 times e to the zero, and then minus 88.8 .8 times e to the zero, which is equal to one times these two constants, and I get a minus 80. Here I'm measuring a minus 80.328. The reason they're not identical is we do have finite slopes on our impulse function. Now let's further zoom in and take a look at this term right over here, that's just below. And you can see they have a peak about 4.84 volts. Now this instant in time is about five times the time constant that's five milliseconds. In other words, about 25 milliseconds. The exact value of time here is actually 25.608 milliseconds. Let's plug that into our equation. Again, once you're beyond zero, the impulse is equal to zero. So I have my 8.88 times e to the minus t over tau, minus 88.8 .8 times e to the minus t over tau, and then plugging in the value here of t, of 25.608 milliseconds, I get 5.32 minus 0.53, and that's 4.79. We're measuring 4.84 here. We took the simulation out to five time constants of our lowest response. So you can see our results just reaching steady state. And this is an example of some network functions and the impulse response and how to run it in PSPICE.